Hello and welcome to another painting video. I'm Adam and today we're going to do something a little different. It'll be our very first animal portrait here on this channel. This portrait was commissioned by my friend Lisa, who is a lovely person and a lovely artist in her own right and also a streamer. So be sure to check her out. Link is down below. She gave me a ton of reference for her dog Banjo the Saint Bernard and it was this one that I chose after I worked it out in my watercolor sketchbook here. I did it. I said that's the one. And I immediately started painting before I started recording, unfortunately, so you don't get to see the very beginning, but this is about five minutes in. You'll get to see just about everything in a nice time-lapse fashion, but if you were curious about how I paint uh, in real time, you can absolutely watch me on my Twitch. In fact, this whole painting was painted live on Twitch, and it was great fun. I usually don't paint uh, commission stuff like this live, but I was in such a good mood, I thought, why not? So this painting came together fairly simply and uh, at this point I'm not even using new paint. I'm using the old paint from my last painting, which I failed to wipe off of my palette, which is uh, is wasteful uh, to be sure. So there it is there and I'm just using pretty much anything that is not dry to get this started and then I'll squeeze out some fresh paint. So this painting is fairly large. Um, much larger than I'm used to working. This is about 16 by 20 inches. Of course, I've painted larger paintings before. I just tend to favor smaller things. So I'm using a very uh, firm brush here, a bristle brush, holding it away at the end there, dipping in a lot of paint thinner, and I'm just drawing, I'm sketching. I'm not worried about too much because I already worked it out in my watercolor sketchbook, and that is such a great idea. If you're trying to do any sort of commission work, definitely sketch it out first in pencil and then do a little gouache study like I did there. You guys will see a lot more of that little sketchbook soon. I've been using it for a, a ton of stuff and it's tons of fun. Sketchbooking is where you practice feeling adventurous. It's where you experiment and remind yourself why you do this in the first place, which is the fun and the need to make something that wasn't there before. Uh, and I think about that a lot. People really worry about things like art block and just being out of ideas or just being burnt down in general and I don't worry anymore because it does happen and it will happen but it's also going to come back that sparks going to come back because it has to come back because I'm an artist and you're an artist even if you don't know it you want to make something that's why you're watching and I hope you do so if you stick around maybe you know you get that little bit of inspiration that'll uh, that just might make you buy some paints or buy some charcoal or whatever your heart desires a drawing tablet we don't we don't uh we don't judge here we just hope we all <laughs> get better together but getting back to the painting here you see that uh, i'm right in the middle of the second part of this painting which is covering up that underpainting that was drawn with such care and you really feel pretty good about it and you don't really want to let it go but you need to you need to cover it completely with paint and that's usually the most difficult part of painting for me your underpainting is your guide and to cover that up is scary so you need to trust yourself trust in your drawing skills trust that you drew it once and you can do it again i remember really enjoying this painting and uh, working with this bristle brush here it's just a lot of fun to um, push the paint around and to to work with fur and just burst out of the outline there every once in a while this push paint outwards into that dark background and, and get that nice little brushy effect it, it's fun and it looks cool and i knew this was going to be uh, less stressful than painting a portrait a human portrait which is full of uh requirements and having to match the eyes and everything needs to be very close to the real thing if you're off by even a millimeter if the eye is slightly off center it doesn't quite look like the person I don't have to deal with any of that uh, this is just very it's not easier everything has its own challenge I almost want to say it's more poetic it's more my interpretation when I'm, I'm comparing this to portrait painting because I've studied anatomy human anatomy for so long I've drawn so many human skulls and I've painted the eye so many times and uh, but animal anatomy I don't really know that well and I'm not stressing about all that so talking about commissions and working with clients it's um it's something I definitely recommend every artist should do I mean at least in my limited experience it's it feels beneficial 
because they're going to push you further than you were willing to go yourself. That's something I've really noticed about myself is that when I'm working for a client, I just try harder. And sometimes I push things too far and that's also a very valuable lesson to learn. How far is too far? When is something overworked? And when was it nice and fresh and, and um, feeling very loose and but not too loose? That sweet spot is impossible to, to gauge on your own. But anyways, uh, clients, the truth is they're going to ask you to do the same thing over and over. The different clients, I mean. They're going to ask for portraits of their loved ones and of their pets. And this is a very good thing because artists tend to get bored with things. But when you're working on something for the hundredth time, the hundredth dog portrait, you are desperately searching for a way to make it different, for a way to approach this in a new exciting way for yourself and this is going to lead to innovation and this is going to inspire you eventually or it'll burn you out but hopefully <laughs> not for too long so yeah commission work uh definitely give it a shot i mean put yourself out there be brave someone will bite and you're gonna make someone happy i mean that's what it's all about right people love paintings they go nuts for paintings portraits pets these are like heirlooms. These are things they pass down to their children. They talk about them every, uh, every time they have someone over in their house, someone notices them and they talk about you again. And that's always awesome. You're going to learn so much. Uh, you're going to learn a lot about yourself. I know I'm guilty of accepting things that I shouldn't have, have accepted, things I couldn't finish. Uh, but, you know, these are life lessons. And we, we learn, we move on, and we finish another painting. And here it is, Banjo. The St. Bernard, very pleased with this one, feels very fresh, feels very adorable. <laughs> and I'm holding on to it for a while until it's dry and I get to send it off to my friend Lisa. But that'll be about it for me today. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I'll be back soon with more stuff, maybe some gouache stuff, maybe some ink stuff. We'll see. If you guys want to see how I painted the gouache studies of this dog and a bunch of other stuff, check out my Patreon. There's uh, exclusive videos and other cool things, high res photos. So um please do that and if you do thank you very much and if not thanks for watching have a great day until next time